Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to do a second example of using Coulomb's law. And this particular example we're going to do in two parts. The first part goes as follows. We have an alpha particle situated on the x-axis a distance a away from the origin. We place an electron at the origin, and we allow the electron to zip towards the alpha particle. Of course, since they're oppositely charged, the electron is going to accelerate very quickly towards the alpha particle. And the question is, what will be the velocity of the electron starting at v equals zero over here when it reaches this point right here, a distance b away from the alpha particle? What will be the velocity of the electron at that point? How do we figure that out? Well, first of all, the reason why the electron zips towards the alpha particle, of course, the alpha particle will, of course, be pulled towards the electron, but let's nail this particle down so that the alpha particle cannot move. That makes the problem a little bit easier. And so we know that the force between them is determined by Coulomb's force, and let's write that down. So the Coulomb force between the two is equal to K times the charge of the electron times the charge of the alpha particle divided by the distance between them squared. And I'll just call that distance R for now. So what we have to do is somehow describe the distance between the two. And so what we need to do is find an equation that describes the position of the electron as a function of X. So let's say the electron makes it to maybe this location right here. So there's the current location of the electron. It is now at a distance x away from the origin. So the distance between the electron and the alpha particle will be the distance a minus x. So the distance r can now be described as a minus x, which then goes in here, and we can now write this as k times q, big Q, divided by the distance of a minus x quantity squared. Now you may say, well, wait a minute, isn't the charge on the electron negative and the charge on the alpha particle positive? Yes, I know that, but we don't need to worry about it. We just simply know that the force is proportional to the product of the magnitudes of their charges, and we know that the force is going to be to the right. So therefore, that the force is going to be to the right, so we don't have to worry about the negative sign of the electron. We simply want the magnitude of the force. Okay. The next thing that we want to do is come up with a way of finding the velocity. And of course, that will be dependent upon how much kinetic energy we put into the electron. We know that the kinetic energy of the electron is equal to 1 half mv squared. So if we know the kinetic energy of the electron at this point, we can then, of course, find the velocity at that point. So that's our strategy. But how do we find the kinetic energy? Notice that the force changes constantly as it moves from there to there because as it gets closer, the force becomes larger. So we know we're going to have to integrate something. So what we want to do is we want to say, okay, when it moves from this location to a very small location a little bit farther, a very small distance dx moved to the right, how much work did we put into that? Of course, we didn't put any work into it. It's the Coulomb force between the two charges that's putting the work into it. So it's the Coulomb force that's producing the work to move the electron closer to the alpha particle and speeding it up. So we can say that the small amount of work, dW, is equal to the force at that location times the small amount of movement in that, in that direction, dx. And therefore, if you want to know the full work done, that's equal to the integral of all the dWs, which is equal to the integral of all the F the axis. So since we know that the force is equal to that right there, we can say that this is equal to the integral of, of k q big Q divided by a minus x quantity squared times dx. And I think now we're ready to integrate that. We need to find our limits. We start from x equals 0 to x equal looks like a minus b. So from x equals 0 to x equals a minus b are going to be the limit. Remember, when the electron gets to this point, it'll be this distance minus, am I doing that right? Uh, yes, we move from here to there. And so here, x is 0. And there, x is equal to a minus b. That would give you this value right there for x. So I think we're good, a minus b. Since kq and big Q are constants, we can move those outside the integral sign, so this can be written as k times q times big Q times the integral from 0 to a minus b of dx divided by a minus x quantity squared. All right, that's not a difficult integral because it's x to the first power inside the parentheses, so we can move that to the numerator. So this can be written as kq big Q times the integral from 0 to a minus b 
of the quantity a minus x to the minus 2 power times dx. Now notice that the differential of what's inside the parentheses is a minus dx. I don't have a minus there, so I need to add a minus 1 over here and put a minus in front there, so I negated the minus that I just added. So now I have this quantity times the proper differential in order to be able to integrate this. So now let's go ahead and integrate. So this is equal to, when we integrate that, we get, well, first we get a minus k q big Q. The integral of that would be a minus x to the 1 more to the exponent, which is minus 1 divided by the new exponent minus 1, and then evaluate it from 0 to a minus b. And notice that these two negatives will negate each other, so this becomes a positive, that becomes a positive, and we can write this as 1 over that. So this is equal to k q big Q times the quantity 1 over a minus x evaluated from 0 to a minus b. Like so. So now we can plug in the upper limit. So this is equal to k q big Q times. When we plug in the upper limit, we get 1 over a minus a minus b. So 1 over a minus a minus b minus when plug in the lower limit, which is 0, so we get 1 over a. Okay, notice that a minus a cancels out, and the minus times the minus makes you, gives you a positive, so this is equal to k q big Q times 1 over b minus 1 over a. And of course, we're going to write that over a common denominator, which is a times b, which is equal to k q big Q times, that would be a minus b over a b. So when we write this over a common denominator, that would be a times b, and so we get an a over here and a b over there. And finally, since k is 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, if you like to write it in that form, you could write this as uh, k uh, times q big Q divided by 4 pi epsilon sub naught instead of k times the quantity a minus b divided by ab. That would be the work done to move the electron, so the force, the Coulomb force, does that amount of work on the electron to move it over there. So that would be the work done on the electron, which is also the energy gained by the electron. So now the work done is equal to the kinetic energy. So here we can write this as the work done is equal to the kinetic energy, which is equal to 1 half mv squared, which means that the velocity is equal to the square root of 2 times the kinetic energy, which is 2 times the work done, divided by the mass. So that's the last step that we have to take in order for us to calculate what the velocity is of this electron. So it's twice the work done, divided by the mass, and then you take the square root of that. So finally we can say that the velocity is equal to the square root of, uh, where did I go with that? Twice the work done divided by the mass, which is equal to the square root of twice this number, so that gives us 2 q big Q over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times the quantity a minus b divided by ab. There you go. And the whole thing divided by m. So I need an m in there somewhere. So let me write that down here. So 4 pi epsilon sub naught times m. And this 2 cancels out that 4. And it looks like that should be the velocity that the electron gains when it reaches that point. So let me go over here so you can see that result. So what we did over here was we knew that the kinetic energy was equal to 1 half mv squared. The kinetic energy gained by the electron is equal to the work done on the electron by the Coulomb force. The work done was defined over here. So we then realized that the velocity is equal to twice the work done or twice the kinetic energy divided by the mass. And twice the work done would be twice this quantity right there. So that's where the 2 comes from and divide by the mass, that's where the m comes from, and take the square root, that would be the velocity of the electron. And that's how we do that, so let me move out of your way so you can get a good look at that, and that's how we do that.